All right, guys. Welcome to the Paul Cruz Sales Agency. This is the opening monologue for the weekly sales training video. I promise you, this video you're going to watch is going to be very helpful and very powerful. And more importantly, it's going to help you produce more sales, obviously, if you apply what I'm going to share with you. Now, what's happening is this. The people I'm speaking with is small business owners, entrepreneurs, and salespeople, okay? Now, you must know your value. It's very important that you know your value. Why is that important to know your value? Because your value has to be worth more than whatever your price is. Especially in the prospect's eye, in the mind, in their attitude, and how they react to you. They have to believe that what you have to offer is very, very valuable. Number two is this. In this video, you're going to learn how to sell your price without dropping your value. Because what happens is if you offer, in the beginning, really good value, and you give it, and you show it, and you share it, then when it comes time to ask for the order for them to take ownership and you drop your price dramatically without you realizing you just hurt your value. So that, that's why it's important that you understand what your true value is. Believe in the value you have and don't ever compromise on that. Because if you do, you're always going to be chasing people. You're always going to be dropping your price dramatically, which devalues your value, if that makes sense. So that's what you're going to learn. There's going to be five points or five steps on how you can sell your price without having to drop your value and also without having to drop your price. So if you like this video, you're going to watch, smash the like button. Share your comments, share your thoughts. And also, if you want to follow me on my channel, just hit the subscription button below. Now, buckle up, get ready, stay focused, watch the video, take some notes, take some action, and watch your sales grow. Now, for the introduction. All right, welcome to the Paul Cruz Sales Agency. Hope everyone's having a fantastic day. I have a very powerful and engaging topic I'm going to share with you guys. Before we dig into the topic, if you're watching this video and you like this video, smash the like button. You know, if you like the video, share your comments, share your thoughts. And also, if you want to follow me on my channel, you know what to do. Just hit the subscription button below. Now, the topic is this. How to sell your price without having to drop your price or drop your value. It's very important that you understand the difference between value and price. Okay. I'm going to share with you five things you need to understand, learn, and embrace and make it part of who you are and what you do. Because if you do this, you're going to see that you're going to get more sales. But more importantly, you're going to be able to sell higher ticket items, which for me are more easier to sell than a low ticket item. Okay. Now, step number one, and I have my notes here with me. The number one thing you have to do is, and this is what I do. You have to really target the right prospect. Now, if you're a multi-billion dollar company, right? You have a lot of resources that you can go after a mass audience, but even they still focus on a certain audience. Let me give you an example. The movie industry. If they're producing a movie for, let's say, teenagers from like 15 to 18, 
Are they going to target older people, middle-aged people, elderly people? No, their audience is 15 to 18 or 15 and 19, right? So as a small business owner and entrepreneur, I believe one of the most fundamental things we should do to save time, which we can't get back, and money that you don't want to spend foolishly on advertising is you should target the right prospect. Know who they are. Know where they're at. Know what your services and product can do for their business. For example, me, my target audience is small business owners, entrepreneur, and salespeople, and even call centers. Why? Because I understand that small business owners make a lot of mistakes in spending money foolishly without focusing on producing the right sales. So I know with my strategy and my program and my training program and my sales experience, I can help a small business owner. I can help a, a salesperson grow whatever level they're at. I can help them grow exponentially and help them become a more powerful closer and a master salesperson. But I know who my audience is. And that's important that you target the right audience. That's number one. Now, number two is... You have to qualify and know how to qualify your prospect. The way I qualify them is when I do research on who my audience is and what they have on social media and what they show on social media. Now, the way I start to qualify them is when I make the initial contact, right? Obviously, it's a phone call because all of my business is via telephone is one of the things that's important to me that I do is like a doctor, right? A doctor asks the patient's question. Are they allergic to any medication? You know, do they have a fever? They ask certain questions so that they know what they need to do that day to examine you, right? So when you are asking your prospect qualification or qualifying them through the selling process, which is what I do, you're going to get a better idea on how to sell them because they're going to give you the information you need to be able to sell them and for them to take ownership. One of the things that I do in the question process and qualifying process is I need to know, can they afford the price that I'm going to offer them? I need to know that up front because the last thing you want to do is wait to the end of the sale. You gave a great presentation. He was excited or she was excited. You were excited. And then when it comes to getting the order, they tell you they can't afford it, right? Has that ever happened to you? It's happened to me several times, but it doesn't happen quite often, if at all, because I make sure that once I know who my audience is, and I know how to target them, and I know the problems they have, and I know I have a solution to their problem. Qualifying them, for me, comes automatic. So step number two is once you know who your target audience is or your prospect is, then number two is you qualify your prospect or your lead. Does that make sense? Now, step number three is what I call the straight line method to selling. I didn't create this method, but I mastered this method. It's like a blueprint. It's like a track. You know, you got to train on the track. What happens if it gets off the track? It's going to get into an accident, right? So with the straight line method, you know that the end result is to produce a sale, right? Now, the sale is the effect of what? Doing the right selling, which is the cause. So through my straight line method or whatever straight line method you have, you got to have a blueprint on how to get from the opening of a phone call or the initial contact all the way to the closing of the call or the contact, right? There's a process in there that I call opening body and close of the straight line method, okay? Now, in the straight line method, if you know your prospect and you're able to do the right qualification, and understand their problems, you should be able to take them through a straight line method. 
Now, within that straight line method, this is where you're going to earn and increase your value. This is where 90% of the sales are done, in my opinion. Now, how do you do that? You got to know when they're asking you a real buyer's question. You have to determine, is this an objection? Or is it a legitimate concern? You have to know how to deal with those objections the right way with powerful rebuttals. You got to know how to say the things that you want to communicate. You got to know how to tell a story within that straight line method or follow that blueprint. Does that make sense? Because at the end of the day is you have to lead your prospect into taking ownership in your product and services that they need, but you got to get them to want it. So the straight line method and the selling process is very important. And it's more powerful if you've done the first two, two steps, which is know who your target audience is or your prospect is or are. Two, you got to know how to qualify them for your pricing and for your services right? But you got to be able in the first two steps, have some kind of value for them to go through the selling process through your straight line method. Does that make sense? Throughout the whole selling process or the straight line method, they have to feel, know, and see and understand the big picture. They have to see value in everything you say. Because for me personally, all I have is my words how I use my words to create emotion, to paint the picture, to hit the greed button, to do all of the things that I need for them to take ownership. Does that make sense? So that's step number three. Now, step number four is an interesting one. You got to learn to sell you, but not make it about you. This is where skill comes in. You have to remember that you're the commodity that you are the value, that what they're buying is you and your relationship with them and you're setting the tone and that what you have to bring to them along with you is going to help their business, is going to solve their problem, whatever the problem is. For me, my clients are looking for more sales. So that's what I do. I produce sales. That's the value I have. That's the value they know I have. That's the value they see, feel, touch, taste, and, and they get the results because I produce sales. But they had to buy into me first. They had to see value from me first in the beginning so that I'm able to earn their business so that they're able to take ownership of my selling process to produce more results. Does that make sense? So remember, sell you, you are the commodity, you know, you have the value and they need to see that. And it's your job to be able to do that. Okay. And the number five is what I call closing questions. Okay. Here's the thing is whenever you watch a movie, right? Let's say you're excited about going to watch this movie in the theater, right? And they get you engaged in the beginning. You're hooked, man. You can't wait for the rest of the movie. You got your popcorn going. You know, you got your soda going. You may even have some candy going. Whatever the case may be. But what happens is as you go th throughout the movie or you uh, sit throughout the movie, you want to stay engaged. You want to be emotionally involved in the movie, right? What happens if you're not engaged? And you're not involved. You're pissed off. Why? Because your emotions were hooked in the beginning. The movie had some perceived value. You had some perceived value. I had some perceived value. And they gave me the stage to show them the movie. Right? And then the closing, number five is the closing. It's what I call the climax. This is where you know if you did the first four steps correctly. Why? Because you're going to ask some questions at the end of the presentation, which I've been using for 30 years and it works perfect. 
I call it the box close techniques, the box close questions. And this is how you're going to know. And this is how I know where I went wrong in the selling presentation. And what do I need to fix at that moment? Because if you take them through the whole selling process, all the straight line method, and they're with you and they're engaged and they're involved in this movie, you're going to have a high conversion ratio. You're going to get the price that you're asking that they need to pay for your services. And if you do this right, you never have to drop your price. I don't drop my price unless I choose to do it because I want to build the longer relationship. For my clients, I only drop the price on the prospect I'm uh, closing for them unless the owner tells me drop the price to this. But personally, I won't drop it because I understand my value. I understand I'm the commodity. So here's what I recommend for the closing of any sales presentation that you make. It works to perfection. This will let you know where you really are at during the selling presentation or the selling process. So after you do everything, after I say everything that I need to say, and they're engaged, and it's now time to solidify the relationship, here's the three questions I ask. And these three questions, when they're answered, I know I got a deal or I know that I made a mistake in the selling process and I got to fix it right away. Question number one. Mr. Prospect, Mr. Klein, Joe Schmo, do you like the idea I just presented to you? Yes. Great. Does the idea make sense to you? Do you see how this idea, this strategy is going to work for you and help you produce more sales? Yes. Mr. Klein. Do you see the value that I am offering to you to help you grow your business financially and other? Yes. How do you want to take ownership to this? If you do it right, you never have to drop your price. If they say they like the idea, that the, the idea makes sense, but they don't see the value then you didn't do your job. Because how can you like an idea? The idea makes sense, but you don't see value in it. It's impossible. So the questions are set up that way. And that's when you know what you have. And that's if you do this right. You don't have to drop your price. So let's say you have a $20,000 service or product. And you did everything right. And you know that they need it. You got to get them to want it, right? And what happens is you did everything right. They like the idea. It makes sense. They see the value. And you ask for the order. Mr. Client, how do you want to do this? And they tell you, I need to think about it. Or I'm not ready to do it. That's To me, that's nonsense at that point. Most people want to drop the price. And if you go from 20,000, let's say, to 15,000, you drop 5,000, you have no idea how you just devalue whatever value you have. So if you master these five things and you work on it every single day on every single phone call, Less and less, you will have to drop your price. And when you don't have to drop your price, without you realizing it, your value has just increased to your prospect who is now your customer. Just think about that. Anyway, guys, I hope this has been helpful. I hope you like this video. If you do, do me a favor, smash the like button. Do share your comments, share your opinion. Let me know what you think, you know, and this is how I grow getting constructive feedback.
And if you want to follow me on my channel, just hit the subscription button below. So let's recap how to sell your price without dropping your price and your value. Number one is you target the right prospect and the right lead. Very, very important. Number two, you have to qualify your prospect effectively. You have to know and get intimate with them by asking very important questions. It's called qualification question. Three, learn and have a good straight line method. Have a selling process that's effective, that leads you from the selling to the sale. That's where you're going to increase your value. That's where 90% of the sales are either lost or solidified, in my view. Number four, never ever sell yourself short. Sell you. Sell your value. Offer your value. Give your value. You're the commodity. You're the ticket to everything else. And number five, close with powerful closing questions or what I call the box close. Do you like the idea? Does the idea make sense? Do you see and understand the value I am offering you. If you master this and you do this correctly, watch your sales grow. Have a great day.